Let us pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ. Please stand. Mary Louise Baker and Edward Baker, Edward Clark Baker, Joseph Duren Baker, Josephine and Joseph Barbeau, Louis H. Berry Jr., Louis and Spalding Berry, Edna and Wanda Bettler, Martha and Walter Bettler, David Bird, Raymond Bousquet, Mary Born Bracken, Michelle Brady. Catherine Craven Bryson, Angela Kaleo, Herman L. Carter Jr., Carolyn and Byram Coleman, Linnea Crouch, Doris Cunningham, Stuart Cunningham Jr. Gwendolyn and Fred Custance, Thomas Custance, Tom Day, Grace Dunn, Hilda and Erskine Dyer, Marvin L. Dyer, Warren L. Dyer. Beati Bevere Four, Randy Perino, Jessica Marie Gaeta, Alice Louise Abbott Gear, Alpheus Montague Gear, Barbara and Abbott Gear. Sheila and Arthur Gibbs, Marion Gorney, Wanda Gorney, Pat and Jim Harris, Eleanor Hedrick, Doris Jones, Jeffrey Mikhail Kymak. Bert Kazisko, Matthew Cantor, Albert Kasempel, Joyce Coltzer, Virginia Leak, Harry J. Levy. Janet Edith Mansfield, Leroy Maxwell May, Lois McFarland, John F. and Cecilia McGrath, Christopher Kenneth Mead, Carlos Mendez, Gail Mihal. Anne and Hank Mihal, Trudy and Steve Mihal, James P. Moore III, Mary and James Moore Sr., Maureen and Robert Moore, Susan Noel Moore, Elizabeth Fister Newberger. Anthony Petrock, Les Pyle, Edwin S. Raymond, Patricia L. Raymond, David Reeder III, Jonathan Reeder, Audrey E. Roller, Edward L. Roller. Helen Carter Scapati, Pauline Shoemaker, Laura Stevens, Bonnie Stocker, Agatino Tartavita, Marcella Davis Teal, Suzanne and Ed Traub, Doreen Young, Leonard Watt, Charles White, Carol Zoni.
Well, good morning, All Saints Church. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to get to be with you in person. You are one of a handful of churches where my regular visitation happened in the midst of pandemic. So it was online. And while I've been at the church before, I have not been here on a Sunday morning before. So I'm so glad. I'm grateful for our being able to be together online when we were, as opposed to not at all. But I'm especially grateful for being with you today. I say every single Sunday, I say it partially for me, but I say it also for the entire diocese. I don't ever want to take this for granted again. I grew up Episcopalian. I knew there was always a service. Sometimes I went, sometimes I didn't. And on the days that I didn't go, I would tell God, add my prayers to the ones at the church. You know they're praying, so add mine to theirs. And I knew there would be another service. And then 2020 happened. And so this is something to be treasured, to be cherished, and to always be grateful for. And I don't want to ever take it for granted again. So I offer that to you as our worship continues. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have pre prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. God of abundance and grace, you have united us together in purpose and place. We give thanks for all your gifts and pray that you inspire us with your freely given love 
to serve you, our neighbors, and our community of faith. May we bless, break, and freely share our time, talent, and treasure, being rooted in joy, rooted in love, and rooted in abundance. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated for the lessons. reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, a reading from the first epistle of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the God who loves us. Amen. Please be seated. I'm struck as I listen to those All Saint lessons again, and I've 
heard them many times this week and preached on them many times this week. Um, and it's always a blessing when you can get some passages that you can stick with and God can keep working with you on them and the spirit keeps rolling around in you, bringing you more information and more knowledge. But I am struck with them about how they position a vision for what the world could be. How they position a vision of who God is calling us to be. How they position a vision of who we actually are. And the beauty of All Saints Day is it gives us an opportunity not only to think about the saints who have gone before us and the saints of the church and all the unnamed saints, the saints that are in our lives that got us to this place where we are right now, but our own saintliness. And everything in the world around us is very much geared to remind us that we are not enough and that we do not have enough and that we cannot actually make a difference. That what is happening is what is happening. There's a phrase that I hear myself using and every time I hear myself using it, I wanna wash my mouth out with soap. It is what it is. From a heavenly point of view, it is never what it is. What we are facing in life is not ever what God plans for it to be. And God is not ever finished working with us, which is why we all qualify for that role of saint. And our tendency, I think, so often with saints is to think about those saints of the church, those people who seem to have a life that was so elevated, so full of purity, so full of holiness, so full, full of dedication and righteousness towards God and God's vision. They say they lived on a completely different plane. They are the Mother Teresas. They are the Martin Luther Kings. They are these people that seem to walk in a different kind of world. But here is the interesting thing. When Martin Luther King was born, he was one more baby. And when Mother Teresa was born, she was one more baby. They were not born into who they turned into. That was a day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, transformation where they came to live into the vision that God had for them. It's almost helpful to not think about those big names of the church, to not think about St. Francis, to not think about the gospel writers, to not think about Mary Magdalene, to not think about those people that we call saints, but to think about the people that we have experienced in our lives that had a vision. I am convinced that there are saints walking around us all the time, and many of them are elementary and high school school teachers. If you think about it for a second, and you really do think about this. I wonder how many people in this room have a memory <clears throat> of a teacher at some point saying, I think you're gonna be really good at this. If you have that memory, can you raise your hand? They do it all the time. They picture things for people. Pay attention when you listen to people interviewed who are successful or at the top of their game, who um, have done something incredible, uh, whether it's in the sciences or in the arts, whether it's math or in um, writing, whatever it is, almost inevitably they will refer back to some teacher who said, I knew you were gonna be a writer. You are so good at math. You are going to be a teacher of math. You're gonna, you are so good at figuring out why something works, you're gonna be a researcher. They see these things for us. 
They see a vision for us. This is the work of saints. We get to the end of the story. We get to that thing that someone has culminated their life doing and we say, that's a saint. But actually, go back to these passages again. Jesus starts that Sermon on the Mount, positioning a vision of what the world can look like, where people who are blessed are those who are poor, those who are hungry, who are thirsty for righteousness, thirsty and hungry to be like who God has created them to be. Those who mourn are blessed. Those who are peacemakers or persecuted are blessed. Those are the blessed people in the world. That is taking everything, as our presiding bishop likes to say, everything that we think is right side up and turning it upside down to make it right side up. Jesus presents a completely different vision for the world. When we get to the revelation and the, the writer who we think might be John, but when we get to John's writing and revelation, he flat out says the word, I looked and saw a great multitude. He looked, he saw a vision. He saw what could be that there were masses and masses of people who were worshiping God and there were the angels amongst all those people. He had that vision for it. Our tendency is to think that visions happen only for prophets and that they happen only in scripture or they happen only for saints and they happen only for people who are making these broad changes in the world. And God has given every single one of us that flash of insight or a moment of inspiration or a piece of our imagination where we can see something that is different. Different from what we face right now. The world looks absolutely impossible right now. There's so much about it that makes absolutely no sense. How do we have a roaring economy and so many people that need help with food that have to make the decision between, do I buy gas, do I pay for medicine, or do I buy food? When so many people are working, record low unemployment, highest wages, and it continues on and on and on. The full expectation that we're going to spend more money than we've ever spent before at Christmas time this year. Some things don't make sense. Watching the aggression that is happening in sovereign nations, watching terrorism and war and the threat of war, and the ongoing gun violence that we have just come to think of as normal. These things don't make sense. And here's how I know we have a vision. Most of us get to the point where we have to turn the television off. We can't watch the news anymore. You know why? Because the news doesn't match up to the vision of what we have for the world. Most of us say, I can't think about that anymore. You know why? Because what we are thinking about argues with that inner sense of vision that God has given us. We are frustrated with what we see because God has given us a vision of what the world could be. That it could be safe to go to church or the grocery store. That there could be peace in places that have been fighting for thousands of years that we could talk with each other and dialogue with each other even if we disagree on issues and that actually we might learn from each other in those disagreements. Some part of us knows this to be true. That is the vision that comes from us from God. So there's a rightness in our desire to turn some things off, to lower the volume on things. But that is not enough. The difference that we read in the gospel, the difference that we read in Revelation, the difference that we read in the epistle today, 
The difference is taking that vision that we have for something different, whether it's for a person or a place or the whole wide world or an issue, but taking that vision and nurturing it. Think back to that teacher. They may have seen something in you, but they didn't just see it and say, okay, I'm not talking to you about it anymore. But they made sure that you got the instruction you needed, the extra reading that you needed, that needed the extra homework, the extra exposure. They may have even talked to your parents about it, a particular gift that they saw in you that could use more enrichment, that could use a tutor, that could use an additional teacher or additional learning. It is the same with the visions that we have for the world. It really does take holding that vision in our hands and holding it before God and saying, okay, God, this makes no sense to me, but I keep thinking the world can live in peace. And so I'm gonna keep praying for that. And I'm asking you to help me do my part in bringing peace. Help me to do my part in making sure people can eat and that our economy makes sense. Help me to do my part with making sure that people are safe wherever they go. We hold it in prayer and we ask for God's inspiration on what we are to do. But it's important that we don't think we're in these things on our own. I'm really aware that um, two things. One, that this, this kind of inspiration, these kinds of visions, they don't typically happen when we're sitting going, okay, let me have a vision, let me have a vision, let me have a vision. That's not how it works. This kind of flash of inspiration, the, the, the knowledge of how to solve a problem, often happens when the brain is relaxed. Scientists will tell us that when we have more alpha waves, alpha waves are what happens when your brain is not thinking. My most common way of getting to alpha waves when I lived in Texas was driving, because in Texas, you just drive straight. And the roads are wide, and you're going for miles. I can't get alpha waves going here. <laughs> Not while I'm driving. <laughs> there were two wrecks on the way here this morning. Sunday morning, bad wrecks. The road completely shut down. That's what alpha waves will do for you in New Jersey when you drive. But they do come in the shower. I have creative friends who actually keep a board in the shower that they can write on because of the ideas that come in the shower. They're very creative people. They come when we're doing something, yard work, that doesn't require intense thinking. It takes being sensitive to when those creative thoughts come, when that flash of insight comes, when God is giving us a vision, when we look and see what God is doing. It takes knowing that we're receiving that kind of a vision, and then it takes nourishing that kind of a vision. The same way a teacher nourished yours. We have to nourish our own and each other's. That means having the place where you can talk about what's going on spiritually, whether that's a small group or a Bible study with your priest or with a spiritual friend, but a place where somebody else holds it in prayer with you and you are not holding it in prayer on your own. When two or three of us gather together, our prayers are more powerful. It also means read spiritual people, read the saints, read what they did, read how they thought, read the rule of Benedict, read Teresa of Avila, read these people who thought deeply about the spiritual life and who were good at being able to determine what was God's vision and what was a whim or a fancy. Read those saints who had to work at something. I always think we give short shrift to the abolitionists in our country who spent decades going after a vision. Read Douglas, read the Grimkes. 
listen to Harriet Tubman's story. These people who pushed and pushed and pushed and worked towards a vision. Our tendency, I had someone um, write me a very strongly worded letter about how irritated they were that something hadn't taken place within six months. And all I could think is, you give up after six months? 30 years the abolitionists worked. 30 solid years they worked to get towards the Emancipation Proclamation. Six months? That's amateur hour. Truly. But it takes recognizing saints don't just appear as newborns fully who they're going to be by the end of their lives. We are becoming saints day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. And in this time that we are becoming saints, God is giving us, gifting us with a vision for who we can be and who the world can be. Hold that in your hand. Hold that in your prayer. Hold that in your study. Hold that in your conversation. Let it guide your actions. And you never know, 50 years from now, somebody might be reading about your life when they read about the saints of the church in 2023. Amen. Please join me in the renewal of baptismal vows found on page eight in your bulletin. Dear people of God, in holy baptism, we've become part of that great fellowship of believers in all times and places, the communion of saints. In baptism, God has adopted us as children and made us members of Christ's body and inheritors of God's kingdom with the saints in light. Let us now renew the vows of our baptism by which God has made us a holy people. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people found in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 387.
Please add your own petitions during the silences. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Archbishop Justin, for Presiding Bishop Michael, for Bishop Carly, for Vicki R. Rector, Sister Monica Clare preparing for ordination, for the community of St. John Baptist, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word. word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Philip, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice, justice and, peace and peace on the earth. We pray for all the ministries of our parish, especially our finance committee, and those who serve our community, especially Cub Scout PAC 56. We give thanks for these members of our congregation, Christy Schroeder, Christopher, Brandon, and Tyler, Allison Sainer Brown and Reverend Tom Brown, Zachary and Nathan, Sue and Tim Shawcross, Ashlyn, Rebecca and Jackson Shepherd, Carol Simone, Dorothy and Bill Smullen, for Bob Jackson and Susan Levan preparing for marriage, <laughs> for the birth of Weston Patrick Birdo, grandson of Ted and Lena Kessler, and for all God's blessings which we name. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. For all those on our prayer list, especially Carol C., Jackie Coy, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Vincent and Trish Dyer, Jim Halsey, Henny, Joanne, John, Travis Kosempel, Kathy Levan, Mac, Deanna R., Heather Wallace, Phyllis Wallace, Janet Weaver, and those whom we name. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Pray for all who have died, those in Israel and Gaza, and for all whom we name. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are generous, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Confession of Sin is on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 
Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to our service this morning and to our celebration of All Saints Day. And we're so glad that Bishop Hughes is able to be with us here today. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but we're we'll glad, we'll glad you got here. <laughs> um, there are announcements on the back page. Um, I'm not going to read through all of them. Please do pay attention to them, particularly next weekend, next Saturday, the fall planting day in the Memorial Garden. There's a sign-up sheet outside. Um, the, um, the concert for uh, Advent and Christmas. In fact, we want you to come so much we printed the announcement twice in the bulletin. <laughs> That's how much we want you to be there. Um, it is, of course, a benefit for the uh, restoration of the altar window, so please do take a look at that. Uh, we're going to ask you to return your pledge cards next week and uh, look at the other announcements that are here. There are a few things that aren't here that are announcements. Please do come and join us for a festive coffee hour across the street. Uh, please greet Bishop Hughes at that time. We have some name tags outside on the uh, table in the narthex. Just a first name, make a, make a name tag for yourself, uh, make it easier for the bishop, and, uh, and maybe for some of you who might be new or visiting with us today for the first time. And um, in that regard, if you are here with us for the first time, please do know that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion at the Lord's table. The ushers will show you when to come forward you can either stand at the altar rail or kneel. We line up starting here under the Episcopal flag and then go this way. If you put your hand out like this, you'll be given bread in your hand. You may then consume it immediately and drink from the chalice or save your wafer and dip it in the wine. Either way is fine. If you prefer not to receive, cross your arms across your chest and you'll be given a blessing. But please do come. Now, is there anyone here who has a birthday or an anniversary or some other important milestone in your life in the month of November? Please come forward. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Watch over their, thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, especially Emily, Suzanne, Kimberly and Wayne, Allison and Tom and Wendy. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Please be seated. One thing I'm going to draw your attention to in the announce, or actually in the bulletin, uh, the unpledged collection today, what we sometimes call the loose plate offering, will go to the Alleluia Fund of the diocese. There's some information about that here in the, uh, uh, in the bulletin, so please do read about it. And uh, please be generous. If you normally make a pledge and you've got something else in your, in your pocket or your wallet that you can put into the plate, please do so. It will go a long way towards uh, supporting the mission of the Alleluia Fund. And now I would ask the children of the parish of whatever age to please come forward. Bishop Hughes is going to give you each a blessing. And if you're too young to walk on your own, your parents can carry you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the bishop just read the wrong prayer. So I'm going to read the All Saints Day prayer now because it's beautiful and we need to hear it. <laughs> but you're prepared for Trinity Sunday already. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate this festival of all the saints, be now and evermore your guide and companion in the way. May God, who has bound us together in the company of the elect, in this age and the age to come, attend to the prayers of his faithful servants on your behalf as he hears your prayers for them. May God, who has given us in the lives of his saints patterns of holy living and victorious dying, strengthen your faith and devotion and enable you to bear witness to the truth against all adversity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
let us go forth into the world rejoicing with the whole communion of saints. Alleluia, alleluia.